Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Thursday morning here in Australia, and boom, look at that. The market has jumped up significantly. And not just Bitcoin, the entire market. Look at Ethereum, 8% move. Bitcoin literally just was 66,000 then, now just under 66,000, 65,900. I mean, things are looking crazy. The market is up 4.7% in total. So now up to $2.67 trillion. Obviously, once Brick Bitcoin, Bitcoin, <laughs> Bitcoin broke its old all-time high, suddenly the market got very bullish. Now, I do want to just say, none of what I say is financial advice. I have to say that first. But things are likely to get pretty crazy here. Now, it's just dependent on how crazy and how long this lasts. Are we going to go into this super cycle sort of thing? It, you know, Could this uh, you know, part of the bull market push out into late next year? I know Nicholas Merton, so Data Dash, has said that he believes it could push out to that long. You know, There's plenty of other people saying who thought it was over by now, and some people are you know, predicting it's going to be till December. We have this big, mad blow off top. I'm going to tell you straight up, I've got no idea what's happening. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to keep an eye on the markets. And, you know, this is just a good green day. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But if this, you know, we got double digit moves on coins across the board day after day, that is going to be my signal to start scaling out. I don't think we're going to get there just yet. This is a bit of bullish enthusiasm because Bitcoin's finally broke its old all time high of 64,000. And look, so Ethereum's now almost doing it. I think it got up to 4,200, 4,400, so it's very close. And all these other coins are starting to fire up as well. So I don't think that's what this is. This is just, again, as I spoke, it's like a breakout trade. That can be a really good time to get in. Now, not always. Sometimes it can be what they call a double top and it all rolls over and it's just a complete fake out. Still possibility that that's what's going on, but I think this is just... You know, we've already been through such a bearish trend. This is now people are, are getting excited again. And this is not retail yet. They haven't, you know, everything's sort of retail if it's not uh, institutional money. But we don't have that retail FOMO yet. This isn't just every random person on the street going, have you heard about Bitcoin? Have you heard about Ethereum? Have you heard about, you know, Doge? You know, they're going to millions. That's yeah, that's the retail FOMO that I'm talking about. And if you're all of a sudden getting your hair cut or in a cab and people are starting to give you financial advice saying, you know, you should get into this currency, that is probably the time where you need to say, right, I should start taking profits now because that really is when things will get crazy. Are we there yet? I don't know. But in the last 24 hours, boom, 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 you know, boom, look at these moves quite substantial but again i think this is just the people who've been in the space for a while and they probably got out and now they've heard that things are going back up they've decided to get back in or at least deploy substantial amounts of their stable coins that they like like that they likely sorry had sitting on the side so this is just a really good day but i suspect the volatility is going to really start to gear up so we're going to have days like this and then we got the weekend coming up quite possible we have a substantial pullback not saying that's what's going to happen but i just think the volatility from here gets pretty crazy all right dominance down ever so slightly so bitcoin just under 47 percent we'll have to wait and see whether it goes up or down a lot of volume obviously hence why the prices are all over the place and guay staying down which is good only five dollars but again that's for a basic transaction any smart contract kind of thing happening and you're looking at more sort of 50 60 dollars so still quite expensive there's talk that eth 2.0 will be around about may june next year like the complete sort of rollout you know fingers crossed that that comes because the transaction prices are just horrendous at the moment and again it's only going to get worse unfortunately as this starts to blow up and unless there's something else some other you know ethereum uh upgrade that comes earlier that helps with them then they're more than they are more than likely sorry really struggling with the english language again today they're more than likely going to get really bad but anyway have a look at that i mean it's just a sea of green there's almost nothing red so what was the best performer in the last 24 hours in the top 100 because that's what i mainly focus on okb i mean have a look at that 30 percent huobi token 
nearly 20%. Engine, nearly 20%. Safe Moon, good lord. Still at that too, they hardly ever see that change. I mean, Nexo, Luna, Solana, The Graph, Rune, Litecoin, you name it. This is, again, mostly people who've been in the space for a while and are now convinced that, yep, this is going back. Uh, you know, we're in the next part of the bull phase. Now, the interesting thing is to think if what happens if we just went through was the new bear market? If that's it, you go through kind of, you know, three to maybe six months of sort of downwards and then it starts to make its way up. That is a consideration. I'm not sold on that just yet, but it's definitely something that I'm thinking that, you know, now the institutional money's here and once the institutional money is here, then the rest of the world starts to come because they're starting to offer it to everybody else. You know, the, the normal people... And look, I consider myself part of the normal people, but the, the, the normal people who don't know about crypto have been very hesitant. Once their big banks and you know super funds and things like that start to say, hey, we've got this, that's when it becomes the norm and that's when you know we get that mainstream adoption. Now, is that mainstream adoption coming right now? It's really hard to say, but we're definitely closer to it because the institutions are here. You can't have mainstream adoption without the institutions getting in. They then push it on to the rest uh, of people, you know, the rest of the mainstream as they stay. So look, some massive moves. And again, that's from a 4.7% move. Wait until we start seeing the really crazy stuff. When you're seeing this jump up by, you know, sort of 10, 15% in a 24-hour period, that's a good indication, again, that we're probably close to a blow off top. Now, it doesn't mean the absolute end of it, because like I said, maybe what we went through is the new bear market. I don't know, and it's not too hard to hold through a bear market uh, and a 50% retracement, or at least I don't think it is, but for other people, it probably will be. All right, it's green across the board. What about losses? Were there any losses in the top 100? There's always going to be an outlier, and it'll probably be some kind of uh, stable coin that's down a bit, but maybe there's something else as well. All right, there we go. A Comey down ever so slightly, and then, yeah, look, uh, the the stable coins uh, one is down. So one stable coin's down a little bit, and a Comey, and that's it in the top 100. So things are very, very bullish at the moment. And like I said, uh, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. Beware that the volatility is really going to start to jump. You know, t a ton of people are going to go long right now. I can tell you that. That's just the way it is. Everyone's going to be, I'm longing, I'm longing. And there's going to be a point, and I don't know how to work it out because I'm not a trader, but they'll be able to work out when the longs are enough that if they short, uh, it basically crushes everyone and then they push the price straight back up again. It's just these wicks that'll go down low enough to crush everybody who went long uh, and then push the price uh, back up again uh, to a more acceptable price because they'll have buy orders and things in like that. That's the way the big people play and that's why I don't generally trade. Although I have taken advantage of this breakout trade and look, I, I've I bought some coins a long time ago. I mean, not that long ago, during the bear market as well uh, in altcoins, but I really have been focusing on uh, mainly Bitcoin of late. And now that Bitcoin has that breakout trade, I'm still happy to put some money into Bitcoin. But once Bitcoin starts pushing, you know, probably above $80,000, I'll probably really start to draw back on how much I'm putting into Bitcoin. But I'm happy to put money into Bitcoin at the moment. It just, it won't be more than 30% of my portfolio uh, because it is now in price discovery. And I just don't want to be throwing too much money into Bitcoin at price discovery, particularly the higher we go, probably the less I'll be putting in. Uh, I'll be focusing a little bit more on altcoins, waiting for that kind of blow off top, but definitely having a whole lot of cash uh, sitting on the side. I'll probably start to up the amount of cash I have sitting on the side once Bitcoin starts to reach, yeah, probably around that $80,000 mark. But look, I'm not saying that $80,000 is a blow off top. It could be, but I just, I'll feel safer having more cash on the side to buy the dips. And again, every time there's a sort of 20% dip or more, I will be putting cash into it, but never more than 50%. And I'd wait for another 20% dip from there if it does, and then I'll put 50% in. But really, if we had two dips of you know 20% uh, each time, that's probably a good indication that we are uh, in a bearish trend, uh, and maybe that was the blow-off top. So you have to be careful. All right, let's move on. Have a look at the Bitcoin chart. It kind of says it all. There it was. That was kind of the blow-off top. 
and we peaked right over it and now look where we are we are in price discovery 65,871 and this literally was at 60 almost $67,000 who 66 sort of nine now it is late in uh, the evening over in the states as well so you probably expect it to pull back a little bit but will Asia start to pump this price even higher now Australia falls into part of that in Australasia uh, is the uh, zone as opposed to Asia but we're in that kind of area and Australians are actually quite crypto bullish and we're going to have a story looking at that and some hopeful regulation hopefully Australia can get on the front foot and do some really good things in relation to crypto and make it a crypto friendly place now we still need regulation and it's got to protect buyers and all the rest of it but the story I have coming up is very interesting but Bitcoin this is like I said that kind of breakout trade now this could still roll over it's always possible we don't want to get you too caught up in the hype and think that it's all just you know uh, you know as they say <laughs> uh, Lambos and moons from here this could but at the moment it looks good it came back it retested that perfectly and pushed higher so I get the feeling like this is a breakout trade and now that Bitcoin's starting to set new all-time highs I am happy to put money into the altcoins and again we go back here and you know we just need to look at the gains that's why altcoins are doing so well because Bitcoin's pumping so hard but we need to remember these altcoins will pump harder than Bitcoin but they'll also dump harder than Bitcoin. So if you've got a coin that pumps four times as much as Bitcoin when things are going well, it's also going to dump m most likely five times worse than what it was pumping, if not more. So just be very careful in the altcoin space. Do your research. There's plenty of good projects out there. They're not that hard to find. But gee, you know, when you get outside of the top 100 and you're dabbling at, you know, three, four hundred, five hundred, nine thousand, you're really playing with fire. And again, I can never offer you financial advice. That's just my personal opinion. I have very little invested in coins outside the top 100. And I don't think I'm invested in anything that's like 200, 300 or 500, let alone into the thousands. All right. This is very interesting. Polygon, they are just... They are getting mass adoption. They really are. So Polygon is becoming more independent from Ethereum as app numbers rise. So they have more than 3,000 apps at the moment on the Layer 2 platform. And that's up from just 30 last year. Less than a year ago, that is a massive, massive return. That's 100x. They're a hundred, they've got 100 times more people using Polygon now than they did just a year ago. Imagine where this is going. And Ethereum is looking, at least, you know, the reports are that they're looking to become sort of chain agnostic, not so much chain agnostic. They'll still be a layer two for Ethereum, but they'll also be cross chain compatible as not, not, sorry, not uh, chain agnostic because that's not what I meant, but uh, cross chain compatibility is what they're leading for, you know, and they got the, the roll ups technology going on and all sorts of stuff. So, Again, I've said this before, I got into Polygon at just a few cents and it did nothing for ages. And I was going to sell, I was going to sell, I was going to sell and I just didn't. And I can't even remember why, I just probably too lazy more than anything, which is kind of sad, but has worked out in my favor. I think it had more to do with token metrics. They were kind of really big on it. And that's probably why I stuck with it because I really wanted to sell a number of times. And now it has just done unbelievably well for me. And I shudder to think just how high this could go, in all fairness. Now, look, it's not just this one story that has me bullish. Crypto Asset Manager Bitwise launches a Polygon fund. So this is a fund just to invest in Polygon. Now, the fund will serve as a professionally managed investment vehicle that will give Bitwise's wealthy clients access to Matic, the Polygon network. Now they're wealthy clients. Now that's the thing you gotta remember is the everyday kind of Joe isn't really in crypto. Now I'm an everyday Joe and you probably are as well, but I'm talking about everyone else other than people who are just kind of, you know, into crypto and they are they really are early adopters. It's just the big institutions and they're offering this to their wealthy clients first. They get them in early. So they still consider this early. So imagine what Polygon could be like in five to 10 years. I really shudder to think what the price might be. I don't like to offer price predictions. I got no idea, but it's trading at like a dollar fifty, a dollar seventy or something now. 
I don't think it's a dollar seventy. I think it's about a dollar fifty. In five to ten years' time, if Polygon continues to grow and again becomes cross-chain compatible and all the rest of it, I mean a dollar something. You know, I don't think it'd be too outrageous to say that Polygon could ten x that in ten years. I think that would be severely understating it. But hence why at a dollar fifty now again. A bear market could come and this could drop down to 20, 30, 40 cents, maybe even 10 cents. Who knows? But long term, I just, I'm super excited about Polygon. And I, I have sold very tiny amounts at times and it was more trading. I haven't taken any real profits from Polygon. Uh, and I'm glad I haven't because I think the price is going to at least probably th maybe two to three extra from here before this cycle's over. Could do a whole lot more. So at a dollar fifty, I'm really thinking sort of you know four to five dollars. I think that wouldn't be too outrageous. Uh, am I waiting for it to get to four to five dollars to take any profits? Absolutely not. I'll probably start to do it around two dollars fifty, three dollars. But again, that's only taking some profits. I really am holding my polygon long term. The bulk of it absolutely takes some profits. But you know I've got it staking and it just does so well for me that yeah really selling any massive amount of it uh, i just don't think i want to do it but it, look it doesn't stop here DraftKings marketplace chooses polygon for their mainstream nft adoption so polygon now the price has moved a little bit and i brought a story a while ago and literally you know a few hours after i spoke about polygon it jumped up 20 percent, and it's going up even more so you know you've got to be able to read charts and see things and when things look like they're dead and for no apparent reason and it's just kind of traveling sideways that's where you want to get in you know breakout trades as well but good projects that have just been quiet and for no reason other than it's just quiet that's when you want to get in and again i shudder to think how high this might go uh, in the next five to ten years let alone what it might do in the next couple of months slash year depending how long this cycle pushes out for but super bullish on polygon i really like the team and everything they've done and i i really see them getting more and more adoption all right digital currency group authorizes the purchase of one billion dollars worth of gbt shares so digital currency group are a major investor uh, in grayscale and they have now purchased another billion dollars worth of the grayscale bitcoin trust and particularly if this ends up turning into a spot uh, trust which is what grayscale is trying to do whew, digital currency group i mean they've got their fingers in everything they are really really smart people uh, and yeah, doesn't surprise me that they've bought another billion dollars basically of uh, Bitcoin because that's what it will likely be in the future. It will be actual Bitcoin. Uh, it's not Bitcoin at the moment. I mean, it is Bitcoin, but it, it's not a true Bitcoin uh, ETF. But I believe in a matter of time, that's exactly what it will be. And Digital Currency Group will be uh, more than happy with their purchase, I have no doubt. All right, Van Eck have now had a Bitcoin futures ETF uh, given the green light as well. So there's another one. They joined the ProShares Bitcoin ETF. And again, you're going to hear more and more of these over the next few weeks to months being uh, grant granted. And they're all likely going to be futures ETFs. And I think Grayscale will get their uh, spot uh market etf approved but i don't think that'll come till next year sometime uh exactly when who knows you know they will want the futures etfs to you know get their share of the market and all the rest of it before they're going to green light a spot uh etf now mount gox oh this has been going on forever like the trustee has announced that they're going to approve a rehabilitation plan so you know hopefully people from mount gox will start to get their bitcoin back and i mean what a time to get it back as well they likely bought it for oh you know 10 20 30 40 50 dollars something like that bitcoin would have been worth about there you know maybe even you know a hundred bucks or 200 bucks and now they're sitting on bitcoin that's worth you know sixty thousand dollars now what we need to keep in mind is people who've waited this long could come out and there could be a bit of a sell-off obviously i don't think there would be enough bitcoin there to really hurt the market overall and i think the appetite to buy it 
would be pretty big as well. Now they did say it likely wouldn't begin for at least a month once the rehabilitation plan has become final and binding. So we're not looking till at least sort of very late November for it to start. Uh, and again, that's just, uh, it wouldn't be likely until then, not it's guaranteed, then it still could push out till December, you know, maybe even next year. And again, expect that there will be a bit of a sell-off. There will be people there taking profits for sure, uh, and you couldn't blame them, but I think the appetite would be enough that it'll probably get bought up pretty quick, anything that does get sold, depending on where we are in price for that matter. You know, if this, you know, takes until like late December, maybe January next year, and Bitcoin's at, you know, $150,000, $200,000, then this could be the cascading effect that, you know, creates the next bear market. But again, have what we've just been through so we go back over here is this the new bear market where it basically takes april to june so a sort of you know a three four month sort of down period before we go back up is that the new bear market it's definitely something to consider and maybe we've been through that but again that's there's nothing guaranteed a bear market may be exactly the same as what they've been before where they take months uh, to even years, you know, more than this couple of months to uh, a year of downside. Now, again, even more money coming. So a $2.2 trillion asset manager, PIMCO, plans to buy more crypto. So it says down here, PIMCO is one of the world's largest asset managers focused on active income, uh, fixed income securities, and they're looking to add more to crypto. So again, the money really is starting to flow in. The difference is, you could have heard this story like just two, three months ago, and you would have been like, oh, so what money coming in, the price is going down. It is the human psychology that will really damage you. We just, you know, if the market's trending down and you're hearing positive news, that really should be telling you something. Again, you know, the price is going down, the the market looks like it's in a bit of a downturn, not so much a, a bear market, but maybe a bear market, but big money are pouring money into something that should be telling you, hey, maybe things aren't as bad as what it seems and you want to be buying things at a discount. You don't want to be buying things when they're at all-time highs. Well, it's not so much you don't, but that's the more dangerous time to do it. So, yeah, again, funny. This story literally only a few months ago, it would have been like, oh, you know, whatever, they're chucking money and everything's going down when it should be like, hey, hang on, we've got a market that's going down and big money are just throwing their money at this thing. Maybe I should have a little bit of an investigation or at least start to try and mimic them, not, you know, throw all your money into something because you could be catching a falling knife, but, you know, at least just layer in, scale into something uh, that is not at all-time highs because really when things are setting all-time highs, other than when it's just fresh, you know, it's probably a better time to consider about maybe starting to take some profits off the table. But again, never financial advice. Now, last but not least, I love this story. Australian lawmakers want crypto framework that recognises DAOs. This is great. This is Senator Andrew Bragg. You know he's been uh, touting this stuff, and now it's not it's not signed off by the government yet, and they could completely ratify it. But this really does sound like the kind of framework that could put Australia at the forefront. You know, me being Australian, I'm super excited that the government will hopefully take this on board and put something very similar, if not uh, this kind of regulation regulation in place because there's lots of good stuff in it for the government as well. So the report uh, includes a total of 12 recommendations that include the established the establishment of legal structures or recognize uh, of legal structures or sorry I'm going to start all over again. The report includes a total of 12 recommendations including the establishment of legal structures to recognize decentralized autonomous DAOs. I love this. They should be recognized. This, I believe, is the is the way of the future. Now, based on advice from crypto firms and organizations including Swift FTX, Ripple, R3 and Blockchain Australia, the authors of the document stress that any future regulatory framework should be technology agnostic and should not explicitly or otherwise endorse any particular technology. I love this. Give them all a fair chance. Like, yes, I like Bitcoin. Yes, I like Ethereum. But there could be stuff that's better and we won't know unless they're given a chance. I'm not saying there is. I really, really like Bitcoin and Ethereum. 
But hey, we can't simply, again, sort of pigeonhole it and say, yes, that's the technology and nothing else uh, can be given, you know, the chance to grow and see if it's better, if it can, you know, change things for the good. Now, it says, we propose that the Australian government aligns digital asset regulations with requirements imposed on the same asset in its traditional form with the principle of same risk, same activity, same treatment. I love this. I completely agree. Now, the report highlights the need to ensure that current anti-money laundering, we do need this, and counter-terrorism financing, again, we need this, regulations do not undermine innovation and that the capital gains tax regime be amended in, a, in such a way that digital, digital asset transactions only create a capital gains tax event when they genuinely result in a clearly definable capital gain or loss. Love this. This is the kind of regulation we need to go forwards. Yes, we need anti-money laundering. Yes, we need counter-terrorism. Yes, capital gains have to be paid. That's just the way it is. You're not going to avoid tax. If you're in cryptocurrency to avoid paying taxes and things like that, you're going to get caught eventually. You're going to come undone. And yeah, my advice is just pay your taxes, particularly if you've made you know, 10, 15 X on your money what does it matter if you've got to pay 30% or 50%? Yeah, it hurts. But what's half of a 10 or a 15x? It's a 5 or a 7x. Tell me where else you could have got that in such a short amount of time. For me, happy to pay my taxes. Absolutely zero issues with it. Don't get me wrong. If they start upping the tax, you know, just for people on crypto and all the rest of it, that will really annoy me because... You know, why, again, segregate one field? You know, you up taxes uh, based on the percentage, no matter what you've invested in. But don't just simply come looking to take all the taxes from people who've maybe been able to make life-changing money. Now, I'm not at the life-changing money uh, part, unfortunately, but I'm definitely, you know, a thousand times better off than what I was before. And I'd hate for the government to come in and just take a big chunk of that and have me basically end up sort of not too far off where I started. But anyway, moving on. The report also recommends a company tax discount on 10% on crypto mining uh, operations if miners source their own renewable energy for that, these activities. Love this. This is brilliant. I oh, Seriously, I'm so... When I read this article, I was like, this is brilliant. I hope if we were lucky enough to get these recommendations in, it would be brilliant. We probably won't. We'll have a, uh, a halfway point, but look, this is much better than you know what I had thought it would be now and the elimination of debanking or the practice of banks closing the accounts of businesses they perceive to be higher risk uh, we need to be careful with that I agree if they're simply closing them just because they're in crypto which is what they were doing and they were making it impossible for crypto companies in Australia to uh, have banking uh, done through their businesses that's wrong I agree that needs to be gotten rid of that is criminal what they did there closing down people's bank accounts and making it so legit crypto businesses in Australia simply could not bank with Australian banks for a while there that was absolutely despicable but this kind of regulation has me so excited I hope the government take this on board and again, foster this innovation. Get on the front foot. Don't try and regulate it so hard and turn it into the old system. That is that is really going to be damaging. And I would love for Australia to be at the forefront. Because we go down here and it says the authors, the authors sorry, of the report also noted that the above recommendations are becoming even more relevant considering that Australia is one of the world's most significant adopters of cryptocurrencies on a per capita basis. 17% of Australians, that's nearly 20%, so we're up there, currently own cryptocurrency and a further 13% want to buy. I mean, that is outstanding. Well done, Australia. I'm Australian. I'm super proud to be Australian right now. Uh, and I really hope that the government gets on board with this kind of uh regulatory framework positive regulatory framework yes anti-money laundering yes kyc even though people don't like it it's going to be there yes to you know counter-terrorism financing all of that kind of stuff and recognizing DAOs. this is brilliant this will really put us at the forefront this is you know thinking this is forward thinking this is not again you know being stuck in the mud with the old ways oh, i can't tell you how happy i am 
Look, that's it from me today. I'm super pumped. You know, the market is doing well. Hopefully these uh, regulations get up. This will be so good for Australia. And then other nations will likely, they will, they'll adopt some of this. Maybe not all of it, maybe all of it. Uh, and, you know, positive crypto framework is what we need. And whether you like it, taxes need to be paid. And whether you like it, KYC is just going to be a thing. They need to know who's doing what. Uh, it is what it is. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Everybody should be on that game train at the moment. And I'll see you next time.